societal pressure piece comes from that balance that you have to strike. And it's a very personal journey of what do I want for myself? What do I aspire? And how do I break free or remove the weight of the things that just that no longer serve me right here, right now? What are some societal barriers you've experienced growing up? Uh, so I think society conditions us in a specific way where the path is usually very straight and linear and that's not always conducive to who we are and what we want, our deepest desires. So I feel like a large part of my path has been deconditioning a lot of that and allowing myself to step into the fullness of who I am and integrity with the values that I hold. Now, I think what's interesting here is that generation, generationally, a lot of that societal friction, it doesn't come from malice. It comes from fear. So for example, a lot of our parents came to this country as immigrants and they were struggling. They were in survival mode. They did what they had to do to just feed themselves, feed their family, put a roof over their heads. And so when they found out their like cousins, friends, daughter became an accountant and is doing so well, of course, they're going to want to be like, hey, <laughs> we found the path and it's that one. Now, I think the friction comes into play when in our generation and with the privileges that we have today, we have so much more open and available to us. And we want to take advantage of that and we want to feel the bigness of the world. Um, so I think that societal pressure piece comes from that balance that you have to strike. And it's a very personal journey of what do I want for myself? What do I aspire? And how do I break free or remove the weight of the things that just that no longer serve me right here, right now. Can you discuss any specific stereotypes that you've encountered and how they've shaped your perspective? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I am an Indian woman who has lived in Moulton, Etobicoke, Brampton, um, now Toronto, and I'm a full-time artist. So I've heard just about all the stereotypes there are to hear. And I feel like all of these labels, they come with, you know, like, preconditions. Like, what does it mean to be a South Asian woman? Well, some people will tell you it means to be very meek and reserved. Um, other people will tell you that being from Brampton means your mannerisms are a certain way. And I think all of these things are just stories that we tell one another and we keep reinforcing. Um, and one of the most valuable things that I've done for myself in my own path, in my own journey is A, education and like finding other sources of information, so reading about other lived experience, and B, traveling. So it wasn't until I actually entirely removed myself from these environments that I can then come back to them and view it objectively. Because otherwise, what we think it means to be somebody from Brampton or what we think it means for somebody to be a brown person, like those things just don't hold true when you zoom out and you have a large enough perspective and you get that through traveling, you get that through education. As a leader or influencer in your community, what steps do you take to ensure inclusivity and representation in decision-making processes related to women's empowerment? Mm -hmm. Great question. So when it comes to women's empowerment, first and foremost, I think we need to be able to hold space and make sure that we're understanding not everybody has the same mode of communication that they're comfortable with. So not everybody is going to be comfortable just raising their hand and be like, okay, I have a very strong opinion about this and it's perfectly articulated right now. <laughs> so taking away from these obstacles you describe, um, what impacted you to talk about women's empowerment and teach others about it? What kind of was your driving force? Well, I think a lot back to a story my grandma just very nonchalantly told me one time and has told me many times since but when she was a young girl studying and at the time she lived in Pakistan this was prior to the partition um, people used to throw rocks at them as they travel to school every day but she had wonderful allies in the form of her father as well as her grandfather and her uncles um, so they were very much supported on that path but it wasn't normal for girls to be educated at that time. And now you fast forward just two generations and I'm sitting here and that would never be, the, I've never endured that. I've never had to experience that. And that in itself, there, there was so much beauty in that. Um, and then add some layers. For me to have the socioeconomic status that I have, to have the educational status that I have, to be a working artist, like totally sounds made up. Um, and I think, 
just understanding the power of that privilege and understanding the path that's been paved to me, uh, for me, sorry. Um, if I can play any small role in paving the path for girls that are gonna come and precede me, I wanna be able to do that. And I'm a big believer in like, if this is how far I've been able to make it in my career, in my life, if these are the lessons that I've learned, Anybody who comes after me should be able to do it better because I've come this far and I can teach you how to get here um, And now I want better for you <laughs> I want you to do it better and I want you to have a better time a happier time doing it So you talk about cultural barriers and maybe not even having that dream as a kid um, What advice can you give young girls standing up to those cultural barriers? Um, reflecting on your own journey Mm, that's a great question. So I think the way we challenge cultural barriers like that and the way we eradicate them is through education. Like there's nothing higher than that. So if you can expose yourself to new literature, if you can follow great thinkers of this time, if you can follow people who are making a difference, um, get to know what their path was, get to know the things that shaped them and what they did to overcome it. Like we have that accessibility today. So we're able to go and read somebody's um, uh, like a book that they've written about their journey where they tell us exactly what they did. How exciting, <laughs> you know, and especially with the technology, like all of this is accessible to us. It's in our pocket. So let's leverage it to the best of our ability.